Hi viewers, welcome back. This lecture is about module three on electrical fundamentals, sub module six on direct current circuits. We will be uploading videos on each and every topics. So if you have not subscribed our channel, then please subscribe and also press the bell icon so that you never miss any update from your channel. Electric current, it is the rate of flow of charge through a conductor. Mathematically, current is defined as rate of change of charge. So I is equals to del Q upon del T. Unit of electric current is ampere. If one coulomb of charge flows through a conductor in one second, the current flowing through the conductor is known as one ampere. A complete circuit is a continuous path for electrons to flow from an energy source through a device and back to the source. If we break that path, the flow of electrons stops and we no longer get energy from our circuit and the device no longer has power. By convention, conventional current flows from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. Electrons actually flow in the opposite direction of the conventional current. Experimentally, it is found that current in a wire is proportional to the potential difference between its ends. This statement is known as Ohm's law. So current is directly proportional to potential difference. The ratio of voltage to current is called resistance. Unit of resistance ohm, 1 ohm is equals to resistance of a conductor through which a current of 1 ampere flows when a potential difference of 1 volt is applied to it. One simple way of memorizing Ohm's law is the Ohm's law magic triangle. If the value of voltage is asked and the values of current and resistance are given, then to calculate voltage, simply cover V at the top. So we are left with the I and R. So the equation for voltage is current multiplied by resistance. Suppose when we are asked to determine the value of resistance and where we have been given the values of voltage and current, we will simply cover R in the triangle. This leaves us with V and I. So the equation for resistance is voltage divided by current. Ohmic material. A component which follows Ohm's law is known as ohmic. For example, aluminium, copper. Such conductor which follows Ohm's law, its voltage current graph remains straight line. Non-ohmic material. Substances which do not follow Ohm's finding is known as non-ohmic. Examples semiconductor devices like diodes, transistors, and bulb filament. The voltage current graph will be curved. This graph shows that a line inclined more towards voltage axis will be having higher resistance. Thus, as line shift towards current axis, the resistance drops. Now we will discuss about electrical measuring instruments. First is voltmeter. Voltmeter is an electronic measuring instrument which measures voltage between two nodes across a device. The two probes of the voltmeter are connected in parallel to the two points between which the potential difference is required. The ideal resistance of voltmeter is infinite. So, no current passes through the voltmeter. 
current meter or a meter it is the meter used for measuring the current the ammeter is connected in series with the circuit so that the whole current passes through the ammeter the ideal resistance of ammeter is 0 ohm so there is no power loss across the ammeter and it reads total current ohmmeter is an instrument for measuring electrical resistance which is expressed in ohms a multimeter is a measuring instrument that can measure multiple electrical properties a typical multimeter can measure voltage resistance and current in which case it is also known as volt ohm milliammeter Kirchhoff's law describe current in a node and voltage around a loop. These two laws are the foundation of advanced circuit analysis. Kirchhoff's first law is known as the junction law. The sum of all currents directed towards a point in a circuit is equal to the sum of all currents directed away from the point. as per the convention current directed towards the node is treated positive and current directed away from the node is treated negative so here current 1 2 4 and 5 are directed towards the node so they will be treated as positive and current 3 and 6 are directed away from the node so we will simply write this equation as i1 plus i2 plus i4 plus i5 minus i3 minus i6 is equals to 0 or in a simpler manner we can simply write summation of all current inward is equals to summation of all current outward the second kirchhoff law is known as the loop law it describes as the algebraic sum of all the potential differences along a closed loop in a circuit is zero so summation v is equals to all the voltages across the loop so we will write v is equals to v1 plus v2 plus v3 sign conventions of kirchhoff second law if the current flows from negative terminal to the positive terminal in the circuit then the electromagnetic force of the battery is positive otherwise negative and if we are moving in the direction of current then the potential drop across the elements will be treated as negative so here if you will see the example we are moving in a loop from b to c c to d d to a and again to the b so source voltage its current is moving from negative to positive so it will be treated as positive thereafter we are moving towards resistance 1 current is entering from point b and it is exiting from point c so we are moving in the direction of current so there will be a potential drop so it will be taken as negative so minus v1 similarly minus v2 minus v3 and this will be equals to 0 so we will simplify this equation and vs is equals to v1 plus v2 plus v3 series circuit the circuit which consists of multiple electronic component in the sequential order in a single branch is called as series circuit series circuit has a single path to pass current the same current is flowing through each component or load applying kirchhoff voltage law v minus i r1 minus i r2 minus i r3 is equals to 0 so v is equals to i r1 plus i r2 plus i r3 i is common and we will consider resistance from r1 r2 r3 is r equivalent so in place of p we will write i 
R equivalent is equals to I R1 plus I R2 plus I R3. Both side I is common. So the final result will be in series circuit. The resistance will be R equivalent is equals to R1 plus R2 plus R3. So it simply states that in a series circuit, the resistance across each element will be added and it will become the total or equivalent resistor across the circuit. Equivalent voltage in the series is the sum of the voltage across all the serially connected components. So as per Kirchhoff's voltage law, we know that V minus V1 minus V2 minus V3 is equals to zero. So V is equals to V1 plus V2 plus V3. So voltage sources in series circuits are additive. Now we will discuss about the parallel circuit. The circuit which consists of multiple electronic components in the parallel branches is called parallel circuit. In parallel circuit, current can be passed through multiple paths. So in the parallel connection, each branch has the same potential difference. We will apply Kirchhoff's current law at node A. I is the incoming current and I1, I2, I3, I4 is the outgoing current. Simply we can put like this incoming current is equals to outgoing current. So I is equals to I1 plus I2 plus I3 plus I4 at node A. So current sources in parallel circuits are additive. So as we have discussed that in parallel current can be passed through multiple paths. And uh, we have find out from the Kirchhoff's current law at node A that I is equals to I1 plus I2 plus I3 plus I4. So we'll apply Ohm's law here. Ohm's law states that I is equals to V divided by R. So in place of I, we will write V divided by R equivalent. We will consider total resistance between node A and E as R equivalent. So what is the value of current that is I1 across resistance R1? It is as in parallel circuits, voltage remains same. So it will be V divided by R1. Similarly, across R2, the current with I2 will be V divided by R2. Similarly, V divided by R3 and V divided by R4. So one upon R equivalent is equals to one upon R1 plus one upon R2 plus one upon R3 plus one upon R4. So both side voltages are taken as common and they will cancel out and this will become our R equivalent. So in parallel circuit, one upon reciprocal of R equivalent will be equals to individual reciprocal resistances across the circuits. Thank <laughs> you.